In this video, we're going to use quantum mechanics and the particle in a box model to make some predictions about the ultraviolet visible spectra of conjugated polyenes. So let's start in the top left. We have what I've drawn here in a stick figure of ethylene, C2H4. And then the next molecule I have 1,3-butadiene. So this is a conjugated diene. There's a double bond, single bond, double bond. In organic chemistry, we would teach that there is conjugation in that single bond between the double bonds. And then finally, to indicate the pattern that we're going for, 1,3,5-hexatriene, double bond, single, double, single, double. And the pattern would continue beyond that to 1,3,5,7, uh, I guess that would be an octatetraene, and pattern continuing uh, on into infinity. Okay, so starting off for our ethylene molecule. So we got two electrons in our pi system. We got two pi orbitals. We got a pi bonding and a pi antibonding orbital. And what we're going to do is we're going to model these two energy levels as the first two energy levels of the particle in a box model system. We're going to assume that our electrons exist in a box which has zero potential energy inside the length of this conjugated system and an infinite potential energy outside. Now you might say, that's a horrible model. Electrons don't work that way. Molecules are completely different than the particle in a box. And that's a completely reasonable uh, statement to make as well, but you'd be surprised how good of an approximation we can get just by assuming this very simple model system for what is otherwise a very complicated phenomenon. Okay, so we got our two electrons in the lowest energy level and they're going to be hit by a photon. The energy of that photon is going to be Planck's constant times its frequency. Frequency being the speed of light divided by its wavelength. And that's going to take one of these pi electrons and promote it up to the first pi antibonding orbital. So a pi to pi star transition, one electron in bonding, one electron in antibonding. So the change in energy there was the energy from promoting an electron from n equals 1 in the particle in a box to n equals 2. So in this case, I'll say p equals 1 as far as our models go for the ethylene molecule. Then for 1,3-butadiene, a similar kind of thing, but now we've got four pi electrons. So we start off with two occupied pi orbitals, and our photon is going to promote a single electron from n equals 2 to n equals 3 in our conjugated system here. Now our length is longer and we go from n equals 2 to 3 instead of having a smaller length going from n equals 1 to 2. All right, and then finally 135 hexatriene should make the pattern clear. We have three sets of pi orbitals that are occupied, n equals 1, 2, and 3. Our photon is going to hit it with h nu of energy and knock one from n equals 3 up to n equals 4 for our pi to pi star transition. Okay, so let's figure out what the energy and the wavelength of these transitions are. So the energy of our particle in a box model is that the energy as a function of this quantum number n is equal to Planck's constant squared times n squared over 8 times mass of the electron times length of the box it is in squared, length of the box being the length of our conjugated system. Okay, so the energy change, the energy jump that this electron undergoes moving up from its uh, highest occupied molecular orbital, the HOMO, to the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, the LUMO, that change in energy is equal to the energy of the photon, h nu, which is hc over lambda, so Planck's constant times speed of light over wavelength, which is equal to the difference in energy between our final state and our initial state. So that's h squared over 8 ml squared times n squared of our final state minus n squared of our initial state. Everything here is constant between these two levels except for n2 and n1. Okay, so we can take this expression and we'll solve that for lambda. One of these Planck's constants is going to cancel out. We're going to flip it upside down and multiply by c. We're going to get that lambda equals hc over delta e equals 8 mass times speed of light over Planck's constant times L squared, now on the top, N2 squared final energy minus N1 squared initial energy. 
Okay, now we want to solve this in general for any of these conjugated polyenes. So I'm saying the number of double bonds, the number of occupied orbitals is going to be in each case this value p. p equals one set for ethylene, two sets for 1,3-butadiene, three sets for 1,3-5-hexatriene, etc. So N1 equals P and N2 equals P plus 1. Here we're going from 1 to 2, difference in energy. Here we're going from 2 to 3 for P equals 2. We're going from 3 to 4 for P equals 3, etc. So for N1, I'll substitute in P. For N2, I'll substitute in P plus 1. So N2 squared minus N1 squared is P plus 1 squared minus P squared. That's P squared plus 2P plus 1 minus p squared, cancel out the p squareds. n2 squared minus n1 squared, our denominator here, is going to be 2p plus 1, the remainder from this. Okay, so that's what we're going to use for n2 squared minus n1 squared. Uh, what about the length of our box? Okay, so we've got carbon-carbon double bonds and carbon-carbon single bonds going on here. So the length of a carbon-carbon double bond is about 1.34 angstroms, thereabouts. The length of a carbon-carbon single bond is about 1.47 angstroms, the value I'll use. So for R, for the length of a carbon-carbon bond here, I'm going to use somewhere in the middle there. I'm going to use the value of 1.39 angstroms, or 1.39 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. Okay, so how many R's are there as we go here? P equals 1, there's 1. P equals 2, there's 1, 2, 3 bond lengths. P equals 3, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 bond lengths. So this is 2 times the number of double, or 2 times P plus 1. So 1, 3, 5, 4, 1, 2, and 3. So L, or sorry, 2P minus 1. So the length of our box is going to be 2p minus 1 times r, our carbon-carbon bond length. All right, so substituting all those facts in to our equation, 8mc over h remains untouched. L is now 2p minus 1 times r, which becomes r squared 2p minus 1 squared. n2 squared minus n1 squared, final minus initial state, is going to be 2p plus 1. So we get that on our denominator. Now all we have to do is plug values in. The mass of the electron, you can look that up, something like 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Speed of light is going to be in meters per second, three, around 3 times 10 to the eighth. And then, and then for Planck's constant, around 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. Get that number, convert that number into nanometers, which is 10 to the minus 9 meters. What I get for my calculated predictions, just based off of my particle in a box model, analyzing the information about these conjugated systems, I get this table of values versus P as I go. So calculated lambda equals 21 nanometers, so 21 nanometers for our ethylene, which is UV, but pretty high energy UV. 115 for 1,3-butadiene, that's solidly in the UV region. 228 for N equals 3 for hexatriene. 347, and then by N equals 5, we're getting into the visible region. 469, that'd be somewhere red, orange, I guess. So getting into the visible region, lower energy as you go. So notice the trend here. As we're going along, we're going up between higher energy levels, but also our box is getting longer. So the difference between our energy levels is getting bigger, but the L squared, the increased length of our box, is winning. So it's actually, as we go up in P, the lambda, the wavelength, is getting larger, and that means we're having a lower energy transition, primarily because the box getting bigger is winning over the energy levels getting further apart. Okay, so we see that trend there, and that trend is clearly a correct prediction, because if we look at our experimental numbers, those increase as well. If you actually do the UV-Vis experiment on these molecules, these are the values you get. So for n equals 1, it looks pretty poor, but it is about an order of magnitude off. So, you know, not horrible, considering how simple and how crude this model is. 
n equals 2, that gets better. We're off by about a factor of 2. By n equals 3, it's pretty much right in the ballpark, you know, 20% or so error, very much a qualitative error. And then the uh, calculated lambda keeps going up faster than the experimental lambda does. But you can see that it's not completely ridiculous to use a particle in a box model to model these conjugated polyenes. That the, just the pure effect of jumping up between energy levels and constraining the particle into some region of space does a fairly good job at modeling this effect and giving us not only the correct trend that the wavelength of the light increases, so these energies are getting lower and lower energy transitions as we go, but also that they in some cases give pretty quantitatively reasonable values as well.